Welcome to the introduction to officiating mechanics. My name is Lindsay Walsh. The following video is intended to help new officials develop their understanding of basic FIBA two-person floor mechanics. Officiating mechanics are guidelines for officials to obtain and maintain the best position to see and officiate the play and administer the game. The more comfortable you are with proper floor mechanics, the more you can relax and focus on the game. The amount of time you spend preparing off the court is directly reflected by how you do on the court. Both officials should arrive on the court as a team 20 minutes before game time. Both officials should take positions opposite the table to observe warm-ups. When the horn sounds to end the warm-up, the officials should take their position to administer the jump ball. The crew chief is responsible for tossing the jump ball and positions themselves opposite the table just outside the semicircle. The umpire is responsible for making sure the table crew is ready and gives a thumbs up signal to the crew chief. The umpire should take their position in front of the score table at center court and raise their arms straight up, palm open with fingers together when the crew chief enters to toss the ball. After receiving the thumbs up signal from the umpire, the crew chief steps in between the two jumpers and tosses the ball vertically. The umpire will drop their arm to communicate to the table to start the game clock when the ball is tapped. If the toss is illegal, the umpire should blow their whistle and we should redo the toss. After the jump ball, whichever direction the ball goes, the U1 goes with the ball and becomes the lead on the baseline. The crew chief then goes into the trail position. In order to make the correct call, you have to be in the right spot. With a two-person officiating crew, there's a lead position and a trail position. While moving to get into a position, run, stop, and referee the play. The lead is the official who runs to get ahead of the play and sets up on the baseline. The trail official trails behind the play as it moves up the floor and positions themselves halfway between the half-court line and the three-point line. Lead and trail are opposite each other on either side of the court and should position themselves they are boxing in the 10 players on the floor. When the ball is passed or dribbled to different spots on the floor, officials may have to adjust their position to referee the play. Move with a purpose to be in the right place to make the correct call. Generally speaking, go where you need to go to see what you need to see. For example, when the ball is dribbled or passed, to the other side of the floor, the trail official should move away from the sideline out onto the floor to cover the play. That's what we call working the arc. The lead official should beat the players down the floor and get into their initial setup position. The setup position is usually on the baseline about halfway between the three-point line and the key. They may need to adjust their position along the baseline to officiate the play. As you get more comfortable with the lead and trail positions, you'll be more comfortable moving with a purpose to get into the optimal position to referee the play. It's impossible for one official to see everything that ha is happening on the floor. A well-officiated and administered game depends on you and your partner working as a team. Your most valuable asset on the floor is your partner. If you work together, you should have very little difficulty covering the entire court. Proper court coverage requires both the lead and the trail working for the best possible position to judge the play. In order to effectively cover the floor as a team, both officials need to have an understanding of primary and secondary coverage areas. When the ball is in your primary coverage area, you are responsible for calling fouls and violations. When you are refereeing on ball in your area, you should be able to see the defensive player so you are in a position to referee the defense. It is Trail's responsibility to cover rectangles one, two, three, and six, while Lead has primary coverage when the ball is in rectangle four and five. It's important to note that when the ball is in the key, rectangle five, both officials have the responsibility for coverage, also known as dual coverage. 
when the ball is not in your area, you are still responsible for the players in it. Try not to focus on the ball if it's not in your area of responsibility. Cover your area and trust your partner to cover theirs. Don't stray too far from yours. You are expected to use your signals to clearly communicate to your partner, table officials, players and coaches. A professional and confident appearance on the court projects credibility and builds confidence. Your signals are part of your professionalism. For example, when the ball goes out of bounds, the official responsible for that sideline or baseline blows their whistle while stopping the game clock by raising their arms straight in the air with their palm open and their fingers together. You will then point in the direction of the team now entitled to the ball, while at the same time saying the color of the team who will be awarded the ball for a throw in. Blue! Just before you bounce the ball to the player taking the throw in, Make eye contact with your partner, glance at the game clock and the table just to make sure everyone is ready to play. Make sure you position yourself on the outside of the player taking the throw in so that you and your partner are boxing in all 10 players. Put your whistle in your mouth and bounce the ball to the player and begin your visual five second count. When the ball is touched by a player on the court, give the time in signal to the scores table by dropping your arm. The trail is responsible for signaling all three-point attempts and all successful three-point shots. If the shot is being taken from rectangle one, two, three, or six, the trail official will signal the attempt by raising one arm with their thumb, index, and middle finger pointed. If the three-point shot is missed, the trail simply lowers their arm. If the three-point shot is made, the trail will signal the made basket by raising both arms with their thumb, index, and middle finger pointed on each hand. If the three-point attempt is being taken from rectangle four, leads area below the foul line, the lead will signal the three-point attempt by raising one arm with their thumb, index, and middle finger pointed, and the trail will mirror their partner's signal by doing the same. If the shot is successful, the trail will signal the make by raising both arms, with the lead simply lowers their one arm. When a team has requested a timeout, the scorer sounds the horn to let you know that a timeout has been requested. The nearest official to the scorer's table blows their whistle and makes the timeout signal. During the timeout, you and your partner should move to one of the three timeout positions opposite the scorer's table. A timeout is an excellent opportunity for you to communicate with your partner regarding which team will be taking the throw in and where. Team foul counts or communication you may have had with players or coaches. Timeouts are not an opportunity to look bored and roam away from the timeout position, talk to your friends in the stands, get a few shots up, or do your daily push-up routine. The fans have nothing else to watch. All eyes are on you. Make sure during timeouts and other dead ball situations, you look and act professionally. The timer sounds the horn with 10 seconds remaining in the timeout, and the crew chief blows their whistle for players to return to the court. When the timeout is over, return to the position you were in before the timeout was taken. Administer the throw in and signal time in when the ball first touches or is touched by a player on the playing court.
The scorer will signal a substitution by sounding the horn. The nearest official to the scorer's table blows their whistle and makes a substitution signal and beckons in the substitutes. Some violations include out of bounds, double dribble, traveling, kickball, or shot clock violations. Whenever you are calling a violation, you will blow your whistle once, while also raising your arm straight up in the air, open palm and fingers together to stop the clock. Clearly signal the type of violation using the FIBA mechanic, while also stating the type of violation. Travel. Use the same arm you raised to stop the clock to point indicating the direction of play while also saying the team color of the team getting the ball. Blue ball. You will follow the exact same procedure when calling a foul as we just covered with violations, except you will have a closed fist when you raise your arm. After blowing your whistle and raising your arm with a clenched fist, say the nature of the foul. If the foul happened while the player was in the act of shooting, state the number of free throws while also showing the number with your fingers. Block, two shots. Once you are finished communicating at the spot of the foul, you will jog around the players and stop about six to eight meters from the scores table to report it. Once you come to a stop, make eye contact with the score table, both verbally and visually communicate the color, number of the player who committed the foul and the type of foul. The number of free throws, for example, blue, 10, blocks, two shots. After reporting any foul, always take the trail position. If the foul results in free throws, the trail official takes their position free throw line extended just outside the three point line. Trail official should check and make sure players are in the correct spots. Check the score table for substitutions or problems. Hold up your arms at shoulder height and indicate the number of free throws to be taken. Make sure you observe the players opposite your side and the shooter's feet for violations and fouls. Watch to see if the ball goes through the basket or misses the rim. If the free throw is missed, signal time in by dropping your arm when the ball is touched. Lead position and responsibilities. See the players are lined up in the correct spots. Indicate the number of shots to be taken with fingers and voice. Bounce the ball to the shooter and take your position off the end line and observe the free throw lane opposite your side for violations and fouls. You started the game as a team, and you want to end the game as a team. When the horn sounds to end the game, come together with your partner at the center line opposite the table. Go to the table, verify, and sign the score sheet. Thank your table crew and leave the court together. As the saying goes, we learn from our experience. Post game, take some time to reflect on what went well. Areas where you could improve, and what will you do off court to make those improvements for your next assignment?